Hello everyone, this is a bit of a special video. Today I wanted to give you a bit of a sneak preview for a project I've been working on. Now if you've been following me on social media or if you've been seeing the YouTube community feed, you know that I've been putting out a lot of random light experiments and new artwork recently. That's because I'm working towards this lighting product that I've wanted to do for a few years actually. It's called Afterglow and I've been doing an exclusive series for YouTube members and patrons in the background documenting the creation process. Recently, the last few days or so, I've been ramping up the speed of the production. So I'm in full sprint mode at the moment, which means I've been going over the top with a light experiments, basically making all sorts of incredible fun goodies that I know I'm going to make incredible use of and that other people will be able to make use of as well. So the first thing we're seeing here actually is something that I've just started working on today, which would be a collection of virtual studio environments for lighting. And they'll serve many different purposes but I think one of the most obvious ones will be, for example, if you're like a product visualization artist, instead of having to design a lighting environment for every new project, you can just load up into one of these studio environments, put the product in and boom, it will light it perfectly for you. Or you can, which is more likely the case, modify the scene very easily to be suited towards your needs. So for example, I'm making sure that the lighting in the scene is highly customizable and everything, by the way, in this product is based on emissive lighting. So this is not using any lamps. It's not using any world nodes. It's all about emissive material lighting, which is in some cases slower, but as you can see, it's not really that bad. I'm using a 2080 Ti, but in many other ways, it's more realistic. The types of lighting you can get are things which are very difficult to achieve with regular lamp objects alone. In the case of this kind of virtual studio environment scene, I've been mapping the rooms so that they can have gradients. So for example, I can simulate a sunrise here. And as we can see from different angles, you can achieve kind of really cool light effects. Things don't have to be colored, of course, you can get really subtle with this. So for example, if I make a black gradient here, here and make it white on the opposite side. And then by using the slider, we can kind of get these cool silhouette effects while kind of still maintaining the presence of the scene. And because it's a gradient, you can modify everything in the shader nodes. Now this is still work in progress, this specific area. As you can see, I've also been working on like uh, spherical gradients for the studio as well, which is quite cool in its own way. I can imagine cars being quite a popular thing to put in a studio environment like this. Or for me, I want to try doing like um, aerospace engineering project type stuff. That could be kind of cool. But studio environments are one thing that's not what the product will mainly be about let me take you into uh, another element so another important part of the product will be light cages. So again, in this scene, you can see we've got some lovely, beautiful lighting going on. No lamps whatsoever and no world nodes. I do actually have lamps I can turn on and off, but I'm not going to be using them. And the world nodes, though there are nodes active, there is absolutely nothing on the background light. This background color is just black. I can actually show you. I can just unplug stuff from the world output and you'll see that it makes no difference. I can also unplug the volume and again, no difference. So I leave these things here just for testing. Now getting lighting like this using just a emissive sources, so basically materials on the surface of objects, is typically quite difficult. And if I am using emissive objects to light this statue, then why can't we see them? They're invisible. Well, that's because of a little trick you can do in cycles. So as I move around the statue here, you can see we have some weird shadowing from different objects. I can actually disable this. For example, I have this invisible object selected down here. And if I untick the shadow revisibility, the shadow disappears. But I like leaving it here because it kind of gives you a bit of a clue for what's going on. If we click on any one of these invisible objects emitting light, I can click on it and rotate it around and get new lighting effects for the statue. What it actually looks like is this. So this is under the object properties, under revisibility, you can enable and disable camera. So this object here is providing this kind of back white uh, rim light while it's behind, but we can turn it into any other kind of light just by moving it around. That also means you can animate it physically. Uh, but in the shader editor, you can see that we have control over it. So again, just by adjusting this color ramp, we can change how the lighting looks around the object. Let me disable this bloom. So this is a quite a unique way to light things in Blender, avoiding using lamps. It's also kind of more realistic because the light projecting off of these types of objects is going to be seen in reflections of highly reflective objects. It also means you can get objects with quite exotic shapes, meaning that you're going to get objects with exotic reflections as well. So it'd be interesting using something like this, like invisible objects like these for things like motion graphics, for example, or for situations where you're trying to light a prop or a product again that needs very specific light going around it that's quite difficult to do just with lamps. If I show all of these objects, you can see the makeup of the cage that's producing the lighting for this statue. Obviously it looks a bit over the top. Typically you wouldn't see them because they're supposed to be invisible, but that gives you an idea of how it works. And you could also now see what I'm calling the soft light balls. So the thing I like about these is they provide light for the environment, as you can see, and also for the character, but they're also very easy to see where they're pointing. So if you have an object like this selected and you double tap R, you can basically 
rotate like around a gimbal and then redirect the lighting. So I quite like them for that. They're quite similar to area lights, but again, I kind of feel like you get softer light gradients with this and it just gives you more flexibility. You get more flexible lighting, but the trade-off is it's difficult to set up, which is why I'm making the product to make it easier for people. And also it's noisier. It takes a bit longer to render, but again, not as long as you might think, considering that I'm still, you know, navigating around all of this pretty much in real time, but it depends on your rig. The only thing I will say is be careful with volumes. So emissive lighting and volumes have always been a bit of a tricky combo. So let me show you. If I turn the density for the world volume up, you can see all of these light cage objects now are influencing the volume, which kind of looks cool in its own way. But again, it's something that's a bit difficult to balance. So let me hide the objects. The results, if we let it resolve, are actually quite cool. It looks really nice because having like an actual physical gradient being present gives you more complex shaping in the volume than something like an area light where you can usually see the square inside of the volume. Uh, but again, it takes a while to resolve. Hopefully you can see that while I am letting you know about this upcoming product, so this is technically a bit of an advertisement and I'm telling you about the exclusive documentary series for the YouTube members, I am also trying to give you the raw information and the theory on how this all works. So you still come away from this video with something to try. If you've never tried emissive lighting in cycles in Blender, I highly recommend it. It's very simple to start working with. Let me show you another example. So if you are a like cult video game fan who likes games that have been uh, thrown under the rug by publishers that definitely deserve more love and attention, you might recognize this as being a Mirror's Edge inspired corridor type scene. It's not entirely Mirror's Edge. I've tried to combine two inspirations. One is Mirror's Edge and the other is the Hokkaido map from Hitman, the modern games. Really love the environment design in Hitman. I'm actually using some screenshots of that as inspiration. I've got like a pure ref file with all different screenshots I've taken while playing the game. Uh, I've combined these two things and just put together this corridor scene. I actually did this in a call with a friend of mine and it took about half an hour to put the corridor together and then about another half an hour to an hour afterwards of playing with you know material values just to get the balance right. But again in this scene no lamps no lamps whatsoever, no world nodes. That's not world node lighting back there. If we scroll out, everything is dark. There is this kind of soft gradient cylinder at the back giving light through a glass object. Now the glass object is actually just a principled shader with transmission. Now the transmission is using a square gradient. So my friend Charon from Just 3D Things helped with this. It's basically a procedural gradient that I can control, which influences how much light is let through the object here. So it can be restricted so less light comes through the borders, which I feel like gives a bit more of a realistic look for glass a bit like this. And there's more that can be done with this. I can do all kinds of different effects, but these procedural gradients are something I want to add to the product as well. The same thing applies to the panels on the side here. There is a plane emitting light from behind and these planes on their own can also have gradients applied to them. I'm not really using that at this time, but you'll notice that any changes made to these planes also affect the lighting in the scene. And we get these really soft lighting effects as you can see around the top there. So that's why I really like emissive material lighting is you get these light shapes that are again, entirely dynamic, entirely based on the shape of the object they're coming from, things which are difficult to get with regular lamps. Again, you get more shape control and it's typically more realistic with the results, but it takes a bit longer to render. But I think it's definitely worth the trade off. Now we can always play with color as well. So I can take the color of the glass and change that. And because it's white light coming from behind, obviously that's going to filter through to the color of the glass afterwards. But if we change the color, then, you know, depending on the wavelength absorption, if you want to think about it that way, uh, then you're going to get different results. But having things be primarily shader based like this means that there's just so much control over how things look. When sharing this on Twitter, a friend of mine, Feline Entity, said that they were wondering how it would look with a slightly different color scheme. So using about five minutes of my time, I actually put together a different version of this, which is this moody corridor. And yes, it did take about five minutes because I already had what I call my ambient grunge node applied to the walls, which gives it these dirt effects. It's something I just have at hand. It's a procedural effect. And then I just changed the color of the backlight behind the corridor to red instead of white. And then I changed the color of the light emitting planes behind to blue and made them weak. And there you go, you've got like a different result right there. This isn't the first time I've used just emissive lighting for environments, especially interiors. I've done it in previous artworks as well. And all of these things were kind of working towards me making this Afterglow product. I don't have a release date for it. I'm just seeing how far I can go with it until I feel like there's enough there to be substantial enough to give to someone. But I'm still not done. Let me show you a few more things. All right, so as you can see here, I've got this other statue. This comes from Sketchfab. A lot of them are CC0 statues as well. Some of them are from the Virtual Museums of Malopolska. 
I believe, and no-3d.at, I think it is, but I'll put it on the screen. But what you're seeing with this one is that we have this curve ring going around the statue, and it's comprised of these dots. Again, this is an actual physical curve object, as you can see here, but using shaders and the lines X node group from my procedural patterns pack, I am effectively masking out a bunch of it by passing in an alpha value and then applying emission to the rest. So this is actually producing light, but it's not really much compared to the light elsewhere in the scene. But what this goes to show is that with emissive shader based lighting, you have an immense amount of artistic control that can be applied to objects of absolutely any shape. Now, this is a callback to an older tutorial I did about a drawing with light, where you could draw with light. I believe I used grease pencil, which was converted into curves. So you could eventually draw these pencil lights and then see how it would interact with a spherical object in the scene or any other object. And it was a really cool technique. So as another part of the Afterglow product, I want to have some of these creative elements comprising some of the light cage objects, where, for example, you can have some light cage objects which are invisible, such as these thick rings around the statue, and some cage objects which are kept visible for the sake of artistic effect, like these ones around here. Also, if any of you have been interested in the materials in some of these statues, uh, some of them are using the original textures downloaded from Sketchfab, but some of them, like this one here, are made entirely by me. And if I bring a light around just to highlight this a bit more, here we go. We're looking at two things. So the bronze and greeny metallic effect is actually my procedural copper material. Specifically, it's the complex copper material from my modular metals pack. I still want to do an update for that in the future, but I'm recycling that quite a lot for these artistic experiments. And this other fancy stuff is actually some of my physical artwork, because I do collages made out of my YouTube notes and doodles, scanned in and then Voronoi scattered, again using the Voronoi scatter node from my procedural patterns pack, as you can see here, the scatter node. So this is the scan image for the physical artwork, which I might actually be able to bring up in the image editor. Okay, so you can see down here some of my physical collage content. So that's basically being combined with the metal. And then I'm also recycling it uh, kind of in a bit of a cheating way for the bump content or the normal content. So depending on the lighting and depending on where you look, it's going to look like there's some uh, texture to the surface. Now, the reason why I am using my physical artwork this way is because I wanted to find another purpose for it in the digital realm. I don't know whether I've released a video yet, but I I kind of mentioned this in a recent video, if it ever gets released, about using a new mode of thinking for doing creative projects. I want to eventually also make a product that utilizes my physical art in digital space. So for new types of fancy artistic materials, just like this, that you will also be able to get your hands on and then use for your own objects. So if you want to have some really artsy looking stuff without trying too hard, that's also easily customizable, then I would like to make that available. And then also on the side of that, turning my artwork into actual framed pieces in digital space or the interior design designers and arc viz artists can use it without needing to think about copyright or anything like that. And just to close this up, I'm here in one of my experimental modeling rooms. So this was actually shown in the first and second episode of the documentary series that I'm doing, showing the process of making this Afterglow product. This is effectively where I combine all of the techniques I experiment with uh, down into one space. So I can see visually what's available and the different categories of things. Because I've done a lot of experimenting in the last couple of days, I've got a lot to bring back into this space now. So that's something I'm going to be doing next. So that's about it. I encourage you to play with emissive lighting. If if you haven't already. I've been having a lot of fun with it. If you made it this far through the video, put some kind of light bulb emoji in the comments and that will show me who you are. If you want to get a bit more of a sneak peek, then again, you can sign up as a YouTube member. It's only a few pounds. It's very cheap. And there are some other benefits as well. You get a loyalty badge next to your name that shows up in the comments and it grows over time, depending on how long you're signed up. And you also get a few emojis. In the future as well, when I finally move into our new studio space, I want to start doing some live streams and YouTube members will get a bit of a priority in that, but we'll see what happens as we go forward. But you don't have to again every now and again i'll try and distill everything down so that i can get any important tidbits of information out to as many people as possible so i hope you look forward to the product and if you do experiment with emissive lighting on your own please show me some of the results i like seeing people get experimental with this kind of stuff i'm still accepting casual sponsors as well if you want to sponsor a video go to curtisold.online services have a fantastic day everyone and i'll see you next time